All right. Good morning or afternoon or noon, depending on where you're at. Um, I'm Aaron Dietzen, and this is the Build Edge Pro Advanced Roof Session. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hop right in here. Um, as usual, uh, Kelly Ogle will be moderating for us. If you do have questions, go ahead and uh, send them in and they'll get over to me and I will do my best to answer any questions. Uh, if you do ask a question that is something we'll be covering later on, I may put it off a little while before I answer it, but I will make sure that we get everything answered by the end of the webinar. All right, right up here I have uh, SketchUp 2015. Um, Bill Edge Pro will run in 2015 or 2014. And we have some roofs that we're going to input. These are some different non-standard configurations. I tried to keep the roofs for the most part fairly simple so we could focus on one aspect of input or editing rather than uh, a big, huge roof that combined a bunch of stuff. Uh, before we jump into input, I want to take a look at some basic uh, properties, not basic, but, but the actual properties of roofs. Um, when we input roofs, there are two different roof types we can input, truss or rafter. So I just want to look real quick at what those differences were because it'll, it'll make a difference with the, uh, the geometry, with the properties we input. So in this case, I have a small, simple gable roof. One is truss, one is rafter. Um, you can tell because it says truss and rafter. That's how you tell them apart. Also, you can actually look at the properties. Um, and it will show me different information for the truss roof than I have for the rafter roof. Um, to look at this, I'm going to real quickly throw a section plane on here. Yeah, let's get that back. So we can actually look uh, right into these roofs. All right, so this is my truss roof. If I grab, if you want to grab it, there we go. This is the property for this trust heel right here. So it's a 612 slope. It is, like I said, truss. And then I have these numbers, a one foot heel height, a three and a half foot board width, and a one foot overhang. So I want to show you where those numbers are real quick. Uh, the first thing was heel height. The heel height is measured from where I draw the line, the outside of the heel in this case, straight up. So you can see right there, whoops. Hold on. Right there, we have one foot. The overhang is measured from the same point, but out this direction. So if I pull right out here, I see my one foot. The third dimension I saw in there was three and a half. That three and a half is this right here measured perpendicular to the slope. So when it ends up vertical, it's a little bit bigger because the material is cut at an angle, but that's looking at it straight across at that slope. So that's what makes up a truss heel. It's real important that we understand this compared to a rafter heel like this. Let me pull up the properties of this rafter line real quick. You can see with this rafter line, again, 612 slope, there is no heel height. Instead, I have a seat cut, a board width, and an overhang. So I'm going to show you where those are real quick as well. My overhang, just like uh, before, is measured the same. It's perpendicular out. It's one foot. My, that nine and a half is the material length again. So where I had uh, uh, three and a half on the other one, this, this, is, this material is actually, I'm sorry, not nine and a half, nine and a quarter is this material length right here measured at 90 degrees. The third number I had in there. I'm actually going to draw a couple of lines right here to, sh to, to show this. Um, if I look at that uh, slope, as that carries up, it would intersect right about here. That three and a half is this dimension right here. So if, if I carried this line through like this, um, that's where that would be. That's that three and a half. So it actually takes that material and notches three and a half inch perpendicularly out of it and that will create uh, this heel type, which is a rafter heel type. Like I said, it's really important because as we go through and start inputting these roofs, 
I'm going to be changing properties and, and uh, changing those numbers around on the fly as we do some input and editing, and uh, it's real important to see that. Most of the stuff I input, honestly, will be this truss roof, um, but if you do raftered roofs, uh, the actual geometry and the input we're doing will apply. Your presets will just be for this instead of this. So, pretty simple. Let me get rid of my section. And we're going to look at a couple roofs. The first thing I want to look at, and this is more of a concept than a specific roof type, is stacking roofs. So whether they be hips or gables, I want to create a job where I have a bunch of roofs stacked on top of each other. What I'm going to do for this roof is I'm going to actually, for each of these roofs, I'll actually uh, start a new job. Um, and there's a couple reasons I'm doing that. I want to uh, start with a clean job where there's nothing else in this job at all. Um, the biggest reason I want to do that is because I don't want to have to worry about uh, overlapping lines, that sort of thing. By overlapping lines, I'm saying when, when I put in a roof, the roof looks at everything else, all the other roofs, or uh, I'm sorry, not roofs, all the other pieces in the model to see where uh, things overlap. And uh, when it tries to clean up the model, it looks at all the entities in the model. So I'm just going to keep it quicker for our purposes, uh, just start with a new model for each of these roofs. What I'm doing right here is I'm just drawing a quick shape that I want to put walls around. I'm going to use walls. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about walls. So I'm just going to use auto outline to trace this shape. And that'll give me my walls. Now I'm going to put a roof on top. For my roof, I'm going to start with a standard sloping roof type, uh, 6 over 12 slope. Like I said, I'm going to put in uh, trusses for the most part, just because I'm more comfortable and more familiar with truss geometry than rafter. Um, for one foot heel, a three and a half inch board width, and a one foot overhang. And I'm going to use the pick line command rather than the draw line, because that's going to allow me to put this in quickly and just click around like this. Just pick on each face as I go. And as soon as I pick my last line, this side, a roof's going to show up. That's really all there is. I mean, the, the first piece I was talking about, as far as making this uh, overlapping, if I'm all at the same height, there's really no other issue. This is real simple. This is easy to put in. This is not advanced, is what I'm saying. Um, this is nice. What you really want to learn how to do is take advantage of the automation of what we call the roof geometry engine and take advantage of where it creates this geometry automatically versus where I would have to manually go in and make anything happen. Um, I'm going to make some changes in here. I'm going to select this roof and I'm going to say I want to stack gables and I'll see really where the uh, geometry engine really starts to, to pay off and really uh, take care of some geometric changes by itself. I'm going to change this front line to a gable. Real simple, there's a gable. Now I'm going to put another gable back here. When I grab my first line, see this, this surface right here is actually created by two separate lines, one on either side of this front roof. When I grab this line and I change it to a gable, I end up with a weird solution. But I'm in, in process right now, so I don't want to worry about it. I'm just going to go instead grab this next line and change that to a gable also. Once I do that, then I get my gable stacking properly. So I'm just going to kind of ripple through here and change all of these into gables. Again, my first one, weird roof. Second one, proper solution. All the way back here. Gable and gable. And I'll even do this very back line. Gable. All right, so what that does is that automatically creates those roofs. Now, this is important because they look like they're separate roofs, but in fact, Build Edge will always treat them as one continuous piece. I could, if I wanted to, actually draw these into separate roofs if there's a reason for doing that. If I wanted to I group them out separately so I could report on them or something like that, I could do that. These could be separate roofs. In this case, they're all one. One of the nice things about keeping them like this is if I want to go in and start doing some editing, what do I want to do if this pulls out uh, this direction partway? And I can see this is what I was talking about with 
taking advantage of that roof geometry engine because it will automatically calculate and display what that roof would look like if it alternated back and forth like that. Did nothing special I have to do. And I could go in now also, I'll grab this one right here, change that back into a standard. Well, that's just a beautiful roof right there. Um, but I can step back and actually, again, like I said, take advantage of what the roof engine does and create not an impossible to calc manually, but uh, definitely a quicker way to create a cut up roof than if I had to figure out where those, all those intersections were by hand. So that's kind of the general using the roof engine to your advantage idea where this, all this geometry could automatically be calced out uh, without me having to do much of anything other than change properties. All right, so that's the first roof I wanted to look at. And we're going to keep on moving through here. Next thing I want to look at is this. We're going to input this kind of uh, A-frame, eyebrow, false dormer. Whatever. There's, it's construction, so there's a dozen terms for what this thing is. Um, and then also, back here behind this chimney type geometry, I want to put a little cricket to manage my, my runoff. So both of these are going to put, be input very similarly. Again, I'm just going to start a new model so that we are in uh, clean input. I don't have any other uh, geometry to worry about when I model. Uh, I'm going to start with some eight foot walls. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle around here. I'm going to switch. I'm going to make that chimney type thing 20 feet tall. Put that right there. And I'll jump back down to 8 foot. And then put a couple more just to complete the appearance. It won't make any difference really for the geometry I'm inputting, but I'll put, oops, That's hitting the cap lock key instead of the shift key. Does not work as well. All right, now I'm going to put on my main roof. My main roof is going to just cover this section of the roof up here. So I will start with picking the line. I'm going to pick a line right here, which is a standard slope. And what I can do is as I input, I can change these properties. So I'll put a gable right here. I'm going to switch back to a standard slope on the back side. Generally, if you've seen me do input before, I have a tendency of just putting standard slopes on everything and then using direct edit to go change the properties of individual slopes. That's not necessary. You can actually change as you go like this. Um, once I get to this point, nothing shows up because I haven't closed my outline yet. My outline stops on the side chimney and picks up on the other side. What I want to do is I want the geometry to step around this chimney without actually adding any slopes or gables or anything like that. So I'm going to switch to a boundary line. And I'm going to switch to drawing boundary lines. What I'm going to do, a boundary line is just going to say, here's the edge of the roof with no special properties or anything like that. So it's basically going to create a cut out of the complete roof. So I'm going to back up a little bit. As soon as I draw this last line, my roof's going to show up. There we go. And you can see what I was talking about, especially if I highlight it. You can see how that steps up. So just the whole geometry steps around uh, that chimney. Looks good so far. Um, now I want to come in here and I'll put that little eyebrow or a dormer right here on the front of this house. Um, to do that, what I'm going to do is actually take this line, which is now a single line all the way across, and I'm break it into three pieces. Uh, one piece is going to be standard. Then I'm going to have a piece which is going to contain the geometry for that eyebrow and then another piece which will be a standard slope again. I'm going to do that by clicking while I'm in direct edit and using the cut line command. This allows me to go anywhere along the edge of a roof and just click to place a cut. Now something you'll notice if you've used this cut line command before is it's kind of an arbitrary click and cut command. There's no precision input. I can't tell it. I want it to be 
three feet from the end or I want to put an eight foot section in the middle. I can't do any of that with this command. Fortunately, we're in SketchUp, so if I want to put some geometry in there to reference, I can use my line commands to find the center of that wall. And I'm going to say it's an eight foot eyebrow, so I'm going to put a line over four feet. And I'm going to draw a little reference line there since I don't have snap points visible. Four feet this way. And again, let's draw the line. So now I can actually see this is the center of my A-frame and these are the ends. This way, when I come in here and select, I can go turn on X-ray mode. That'll let me see through there. And when I have X-ray mode, I can actually see and snap to that little point in there. So when I click cut, I can actually reference that and snap right at that point or right above that point like that. Oops, then hit cut again. So now I have three sections and I know this is an eight foot section in the center of the wall below. This is real nice. Breaking lines like this, so I have one continuous line broken into three pieces right now, I can actually set the properties for any of these pieces one at a time. So if I wanted to do something like simple, like uh, I want a longer overhang on that section, I can do that. It'll honor that. It'll give me those three pieces. Um, I'm going to real quick erase those lines. I don't need those anymore. Um, so I can see that. I'm also going to turn X-ray on and off. I turn X-ray on and off a lot while I'm doing roof so I can see the geometry underneath rather than having to navigate underneath it. And I can also see the walls below, that sort of thing. X-ray is real nice when you're doing uh, roofs. Um, in this case, I want to change that from a long overhang back to a standard overhang. And I'm going to change it from a standard slope to a double parallel. And that's the geometry that shows up. Pretty simple, pretty automatic. Um, at this point, I can change the properties of this too. So if I want to actually take that over or that thing and say I want to make it like a 10-12 slope rather than a 6-12, I can make that change real quick, real easy as well. I want to put another one of these uh, behind the chimney. So I'm going to spin around here. Oops. It's right here. This is an issue right now. If I get a lot of rain, I'm going to have a swimming pool in my fireplace. So what I'm going to do is just put a little cricket. I'm sure there's other terms for it. I've always heard it called a cricket right here to uh, create proper water flow, watershed off of my roof. So what I'm going to do is again with select, I'm going to pick this line. That is the line right here. And I want to change it to a double parallel rather than a boundary line. When I first do it, you see nothing happens. The issue I'm having right now is my heel height for this is zero. So that's down here sloping up. What I want to actually tell it to do is I want to tell it to slope up from this corner right here up. So what I got to do first is figure out, well, how high is that? And when I know that value, put it in here for this double parallel heel height. All right, I'm going to do that again by turning on x-ray. And there I can actually see it. So there's the corner of the wall where my outline is, and here's the top where the, the roof hits the edge of the chimney. So what I want to do is just check that dimension. I'm just going to grab the tape measure command, standard SketchUp command, not, not ours, and move up here, and it tells me that is 1, 2, and 3 quarters. So 1, 2, 3. That should be pretty easy to remember. All right, so I want to change this now, this line right here, to a double parallel and put in my heel height of one, two, and three quarters. And that immediately gives me my cricket. Just like over here, I can change the properties. So not that I want to make it bigger, but if I want it to be less prominent, maybe I'll drop it to like a 312 or something like that. Real easy to make that. And again, we're all Everything here is one root. This is all one big piece right now. So far, so good. All right. Um, moving on. Again, like I said, if I'm going too fast, you guys have questions on anything we're looking at, 
feel free to uh, virtually raise your hand and ask them. All right. Next thing we'll look at is dormers. This is probably the second most common request we have is how do I put in dormers? So we're going to look at that. Um, again, we'll start a, a new model. And there's actually, we're going to actually look at a couple different ways to create this geometry. Uh, there's actually quite a few ways. And I'm going to create, uh, whoa, that's big, uh, kind of a mock-up of uh, dormer framing. You'll see that I'm, I'm not going to actually come in and put a floor on and second floor short walls or anything like that. I'm actually just going to kind of, all from the ground plane, uh, create some uh, taller walls. Um, like something like this. Go to the top view so you can see what it is. Yeah, like that. Um, ah. There we go. So this is going to kind of represent, once I put this main roof on, which I'm going to do like this. Um, I have a standard slope on this side and this side, and then a gable on this side and the opposite side. When I go to draw on roofs, too, I should point this out, it doesn't matter what order I draw lines in. All that matters is where they are when I close it up. Oh, that was what I wanted to create, though. I'll throw that out. Um, cable here and here. I have the wrong slope. There you go. On the front and in the back. Right, that's me getting my. Right. That's what I wanted to check. See if this is a. Maybe I'll grab these and make them like a foot taller. This is really nice because uh, what we're seeing here is a. Uh, the whole conceptual design idea with SketchUp, um, having these geometries in here in Build Edge really makes it pretty easy to model, even if you're not quite sure what you're modeling. All right. So that gives me my main roof and some kind of representation of what a dormer wall would look like in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and throw a roof on top of that. So I'm going to put the same, same roof geometry, uh, standard slope on the two side walls. And then the front wall, I'm going to put a gable. And then this last line, I'm actually going to switch to standard, and I'm going to draw it across from this point to this point. I just made it standard. I didn't want to make it standard. I meant to say <laughs> a boundary line. There we go. So that's going to give me just kind of a gable roof sitting up on top. Obviously, that's not going to be some very good geometry, so um, I want to change that. I'm going to do that by just clicking on the roof, grabbing that line, and I'm just going to pull it back into the roof somewhere. So that shows me a couple things. That shows me how this roof ties in and where it dies out, um, if that geometry is going to be good, if that peak is going to push past the main peak. Um, in this case, that looks pretty good. In some cases, this may be good enough. I may be happy with that geometry from just modeling the outside of the house. I might want to come in and add a couple lines. I might say, well, I want to see where those lines intersect like that. Um, but that may be enough. I may be happy with that. I'm not going to be happy with that if I'm concerned at all about what's going on inside because a couple issues. One is I have this roof running in, obviously. And I also have this roof running inside of this dormer section. So I'm going to do a little bit of editing here. First thing I want to do is I'm going to take this roof and I'm going to cut it out of the dormer space. Now we don't have, unlike floors, when I draw a floor, I can come in and use the opening command to put a hole in the floor. I don't have holes I can punch into roof yet. That is something we're, we're working on, but it's not there yet. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to break this roof into a couple pieces. One of the pieces of this roof is going to step up and around, kind of think a horseshoe shape of roof, is going to go around this box, 
And I'll have a second roof just filling in this little, basically a little shed roof that fills in in front of the dormer. Um, I could delete and redraw this roof. I'm going to use my edit commands to show you how to do it. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to break this front line into five pieces. I am arbitrarily picking the points right now. It's not important exactly where they end up. Uh, once I've done that, I'm going to make some changes. These are going to end up as boundary lines. I don't want these to actually be sloping lines. Um, I just had a question about roofs that have multiple plate heights. Yeah, we will be doing some, some roofs with uh, more than one plate height in a, a little bit here. I'm going to jump to the top view. I'm going to turn X-ray on and I'm going to turn on parallel projection. This is giving me like a full-on plan view. This is what I want to see. This is what I'll be seeing from uh, the outside or from above. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this roof, I'm going to grab this point, I'm going to pull it back to right here. Oops. And now I'm just moving lines around. So I can see I'm going to pull this one to here. Oops, I grabbed the wrong point. I grabbed the end point, pull it to there. Just snapping lines, just like I would in SketchUp. Give me that point. There we go. There, and that gives me the roof cut out of the dormer. That looks okay, <laughs> but obviously it's not going to be as good as uh, it could be because well, I have a huge hole in the roof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a second roof to fill in that shape right there. And this is real quick and easy. This is I'm going to come over back in here to roof input. Um, I'm going to go to draw lines and place a standard with the same properties. So the same one foot overhang, three and a half board width. Uh, oop, I changed my slope. 612 slope. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that sloping line across the gap right here at the bottom of the heel. I don't want to put it up here. I get the, up at this point or on top of the roof, and I want to make sure I snap down where the wall is because that's where this main roof resides. Um, go there. And now I've got to trace out the rest of that square with boundary lines. So boundary lines are going to come straight back to here. And then over to there. Back to there. And that gives me a roof that closes in around that uh, dormer. Downside, of course, right now is I have these lines. Um, what I can do with that is, again, to so fall back on SketchUp, I can double click to open this group and go into my erase command. And see down here, shift erase is hide. So then I can just use shift to erase any of those lines I don't like. Come out here, shift erase those lines too. So that, oops, I missed one. But uh, I can do that to, to clean that up and while Build Edge will still recognize this as three separate roofs. Well, the reason I'm pointing that out is I could use SketchUp to go in and modify a geometry, add it to the roof, but as soon as I do any kind of editing of Build Edge, it's going to pop back to whatever roof Build Edge is expecting. By doing it this way and actually modeling with separate roofs, I'm actually going to uh, keep my build edge editability uh, as well as getting the geometry I actually need. Uh, I had a question about the ceilings. Yes, right now build edge roofs are open. Um, but again, let me, uh, let me do this. Um, Let me look at, when I, when I create my next roof, I'll look at the uh, underside of the roof so we can actually see it. The next roof, this is one of the most common questions we get is making round roofs. Um, we don't make what would technically be called round roofs, um, and neither does SketchUp. SketchUp makes segments that look round because they have hidden or smooth lines. 
we can do the exact same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at uh, a round house. We'll make a little yurt like this. Um, and I will, sorry, I should change my primary screen to be the top screen. My uh, new models as I open them up show up on the other screen that I'm not broadcasting. Um, I'm going to go create just a little circle house, a little, like I said, a yurt type shape, and uh, put a roof on top of it. And I'm going to do this by first drawing a circle with SketchUp. So I'm going to come out, make like around a 20-foot circle, roughly, and I will put walls on that. So with my walls, I'm just going to say outline that circle, and I'll get all my wall segments. When I come to draw my roof in, Um, I can pick each of these sides and what it's going to do is it's going to draw my geometry uh, up and down. Oops. If I, uh, I do this a lot, click on the wrong line, all you got to do is a quick undo or control Z to back up and then keep, keep inputting. Whoop, did I, I really wanted to illustrate that apparently. I really want to show you guys that. Um, I'll say we don't yet have an auto outline like we do for walls, but that is something we're working on. We're actually wanting to make it uh, extremely functional where it'll actually do things like identify rooms and that sort of thing. Um, and that, so that is on its way, having auto outline for <coughs> roof and floor input. When I hit this last line, it's going to create my roof. You can see that's that's exactly what it is, it's just a segmented roof that goes around. So something you'd use in a turret type geometry. Um, if I want that to look smooth, I don't want to see it like that. Again, I can just use SketchUp. I can double click to open the group. And then I can go to Erase. And I see again down at the bottom, Option or Control. I'm on Mac, so it says Option, but on Windows it's, con or I'm sorry, Alt or Control. I can't remember which, but. It tells you right down here. It says soften or smooth. If I just drag this around, hit all those lines and release, I get a nice smooth, still segmented, but lines are hidden toned. Um, so if you do have a round roof and you want it to look like that, you can actually create that look. Um, again, then my styles preference right now is set to not show any outside lines, but if I did have that turned on, I'd actually get that hard, dark line right there showing the profile of the roof. I'm going to actually leave my lines visible as I want to see them for some of the other things I'm going to do right now. Um, one of the things I want to show you, because somebody asked about this, I'm just going to hide those so I just see the roof. So the roof, when it's created, is open. It is not a solid. We don't have the ability to put in ceilings automatically yet. We're trying to make them fairly smart so they close up uh, properly. Right now it draws in like this. What I can do again with SketchUp, if I just take the standard select command, click on it, I'll get that group. The whole roof is in a single group. If I double click. If I have a single height roof like this, I can just draw one line and it will close it up. At this point, now my roof is a solid. That means a lot because I can use like my solid tool commands to uh, modify that however I wanted to. Um, I'm going to unhide those lines that I hit before. One of the other things that comes up a lot with uh, a roof like this is, I mean, sometimes they'll have a turret up by itself. Maybe it's up high, architectural feature, something like that. But a lot of times this roof's going to tie in with another roof. If I have a situation like that, I'm just going to draw a rectangle representing the rest of the house. Um, I can get that roof to tie in with the rest. Ooh, this is a very big rectangle. <laughs> um, I'm going to draw some lines around here. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to draw a roof around the rectangle. So I'm going to ignore this, have, it, have the two roofs lap over each other. I'm going to do this by clicking Standard, um, and I'm just going to use the line draw. Click from here across to here, across to here. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to draw such a big root there. All right, and I can see how those two intersect. So if I was actually, if this was how it was supposed to look, I could actually see the intersection lines. One of the things I can do at this point, again, like I did, it's a much, sim much simpler example in the dormer, but I could come in here and trace those intersection lines. So if I want to get a nice, clean uh, plan view for a roof layout, these intersection lines will show exactly where the two roof sections line up. The other thing I could do, so depending on what I'm looking for, that right there might be enough. That might be all I'm looking for. Or what I might want to do is actually have this roof step around the lower roof. I can do that too. I can start like this, um, go back into draw line. So I'm going to do standard. Start right here. Now go to a plan view. And I'm going to take that over to I'll turn x-ray and parallel back on. So that's going to come across to here. And then I can turn on my boundary lines. With my boundary lines, I could actually trace that intersection line that I just drew. Again, what this is going to do is, uh, again, a little more complex example of what we saw in uh, the dormer, because this is going to create a roof with a very specific, specific, excuse me, an exact hole cut out of it to allow for that turret to come through. There we go. So if I click on it, I can actually see that's the geometry of that piece. Unfortunately, though, our circular section does have to stay the way it is right now. I can't, unfortunately, come in and cut these pieces back because this line, for example, has to be where it is in order to define where this plane comes in and meets all these other planes. If I did want to go in and modify that, this is where I'd have to fall back on SketchUp. I'd have to actually use SketchUp to open that group and cut those surfaces out of that roof. <coughs> um, I just had a question pop up about uh, putting items on different levels. Um, is there an issue with drawing as I use multiple levels? I'm thinking, excuse me, <coughs> I'm thinking you're referring to layers. I can <coughs> put any of these items on different layers and they interact just the same. Internally in build edge data structure, all of these items are recognized and grouped together. They all work together. Um, so regardless of what layer in SketchUp it's put on, these roofs still see each other where they are. The walls see the roofs. Everything uh, interacts the same. Um, okay. So I'll look at a couple more things here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that roof. Uh, the next things I want to look at are a couple examples of multi-plate height and multi-roof uh, combining. I have two similar roofs here that are actually going to create, uh, be, have to be created in different manners. So I will show that right now in a new model. Um, while that's coming up, I did have a question about uh, plum cut versus square cut fascias. Right now, the standard vertical fascia is the only thing that we model. Um, it is on the list to add different cut types to the end of the fascia. Um, right now, though, if you wanted to do that, you would have to put in, uh, use something like a follow me command or something like that to make a cut to that geometry with SketchUp after the roof is modeled. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the ability to change the overhang cut right now. Again, another enhancement for the future, though, something we do want to add. Um, another question come up about calcing heel heights. Um, I'll come back to that question uh, after we've uh, covered 
this this sec this uh, this next section. Um, let me put some low walls in. I'm just going to do a two foot drop again. Just kind of my biggest thing here is I'm just trying to kind of give an example. Oops, didn't hit enter. I drew, I drew all those at eight foot. All right, well, I'll drop to six foot. Um, there we go. So nothing real tricky here. I'm just drawing uh, a handful of walls at different heights. And the difference between these two is, of course, where that bump out comes out, comes in. This one is in the center of what will be a roof line. This one's on the edge. Um, I do have, I haven't seen your questions come in, guys. I'm going to finish this, and then I'm going to hop over to them. Uh, so we just finish this topic. But like I said, keep, keep bringing them in. That's, that's not a problem. Right here with this roof, I'm going to put this all in as one roof. And we'll see this would be a, a difference um, with how this works because... Uh, you'll see the difference once I actually get it drawn in. I'm going to use the draw command. I'm going to click here to this point. And again, my roof line hops up to the top right here. Um, the roof line height is controlled by the first point. This is important. This would be important right here. If I click right here and then to this point, watch where my roof line goes. It jumps down. That's not going to work, of course. I'm going to hit Control Z to get rid of that. And I'm going to pick up drawing my roof and just come around the other direction. And this one, I want to stay up tall. So if I click this top point and then the bottom point, it'll actually put the roof line up here. It doesn't matter where you click. Whenever you draw a line on top of a wall, Build Edge is going to try to push that line to the top of where that wall is. And it all depends on where the first point of that line is. So this one will stay up top right here, even if I click down there. When I do that, I get my stacking roof. So again, this is all one piece. This works real well. That's, this is pretty simple, um, good way to do it. This one, I can't actually input as a single roof. And I'll show you why. The difference is over here, when I was drawing my outline, I came across, dropped down, drew front, over, and then I drew my other line back over. This one, I don't have that other line. So you don't have a spot for it to return. So what it's doing is an inline step from low to high, and it won't know how to count, how to solve that roof. So when I do this roof, I'm actually going to have to draw it as two separate roofs. I'm going to have one roof around up here, up high, a simple hip roof. And then down below, I'm going to have a second roof. And I'm going to do similar to the way I did the dormer in that I'm going to come and put a boundary line across the back right here. It's going to give me that roof and then just like I did with the boundary or with the uh, dormer, I'm just going to drag it back in so I get the, that line right there. All right, so in some cases, something like this, again, might be good enough. Obviously, if I'm doing any modeling on the inside, I'm going to have a problem because I got that lower roof punching into my house. So what I'm going to do is similar to what I did. I'm going to take this a little bit further. If I want to combine roofs together, again, depending on what this, this is for, that might be enough. But I'm going to actually take this a step further, and I'm going to make this look perfect. I'm going to actually create two lines so they actually lap over each other here. I'm going to start by grabbing this lower roof and throwing it away. And I'm going to draw a new roof. Oh, I can use that. Oops, lost my properties. Always check your properties before you uh, come in here. It's going to show you the, last, the properties for the last plane you edited or selected or drew. And sometimes your, your properties aren't what you want. So you want to make sure you keep an eye on that. Um, I've drawn several roofs that were not what they should have been because of that. So I'm going to put three standard lines around the outside. 
and then switch to a boundary line and draw. And I'm going to draw around this overlap shape, kind of an over and under thing. When I get done, that is my roof now. My roof shows up in that geometry. I can do the same thing now for this roof right here. I can delete that roof out. And I can start with my standard slope, sloping line on these three sides. I'll switch to draw. Draw that from here to here. Then I'll switch to a boundary line up to the peak and back down. And then again, a standard slope the rest of the way across. So there I have, this is most impressive if I look at it, well you can see it in the 3D. I don't have any overlap. My planes actually cut to each other. Um, so again, simple, ex uh, simple explanation of how that works. But if it's a situation where you can't model it as a single roof like this, I, I could model this as one roof. I can't here because these two lines share lines, and I didn't have a way to get this piece in. Um, if that's the case, then you can actually use uh, some reference points to create two separate build edge roofs. And again, like I said before, just to keep throwing this out, if you want to just use SketchUp to modify the geometry, that's fine. The advantage of doing it this way is I could come in and still make changes to the build edge. Now, if I had a different overhang length, I could actually just come in here and put that in without having to go through and then make a bunch more changes to SketchUp to put it back the way it was. Um, I'm going to hop over to questions right now. Um, we did, there's a question about heel height calculations. Um, we did talk about the heel heights and the properties at the very beginning of the webinar. Uh, Kelly will actually probably have this up this afternoon, so if you want to run back and check that out and see if that answers your questions about heel heights, um, that might actually cover what, what you're asking. If not, uh, do just shoot me an email. I can send it to buildedge at keymark.com or a Dietzen at keymark.com. I have contact information on our website as well. If that didn't cover your question, um, let us know and we can help you out. Another question came in about being able to specify an eave or gutter height. Um, honestly, I'm not 100% sure what that means. Um, if you're talking about the ground to the gutter, we don't really have a way to do that because that's, that number is kind of arbitrary where it's pulling up from. You'd have to manually push the heel height or the roof uh, to calculate where that's supposed to be. Had a question about soffits. Um, we have talked about putting that soffit return on there, actually coming in basically and closing this off, pulling that back. Um, it just, at this point, hasn't bubbled up the list. So it, it is on there. Um, it's uh, maybe something we work on for the next major release, or sometime in future major releases. Um, another question about the previous version. In plan, we had a commit to SketchUp button. Once we committed to SketchUp, we dumped the build edge data out of it, and it was a, just a standard SketchUp item. We do not have commit to SketchUp anymore because we don't really need it the way we used to need it. Um, what I mean by that is I can take uh, this roof, for example, and I can go open it in SketchUp, and I can move whatever I want to move. So if I want to um, do something like, I don't know, oh, we'll, we'll say that. That was exactly what I wanted because I love that roof geometry and I want to have that. If I go in and do that, it's fine. Build Edge doesn't care. Build Edge will let you do whatever you want to that geometry, no problem. What you as the user have to be conscious of then is if I select this roof and I make a change, it's going to put the geometry back the way it wanted to. So this is what I was saying. This is kind of a, it's a double-edged sword. It's real nice because old Build Edge Phillips plan used to get real upset with you <laughs> if you modified the geometry that it expected to be there. Right now, Build Edge Pro doesn't care. You can make whatever changes you want, um, but you do have to be conscious of the fact that if you come back and make changes in Build Edge later, it may come back and modify them. 
Um, somebody else asked if there has been updates since the initial launch. There have. I think there have been three or four minor updates or fixes uh, available. If you haven't already gotten them, you can just go through the extension warehouse and download whatever the newest is there. You can always check the version um, by pulling up your preferences window and going into extensions and choosing it and it will tell you what version it is. I'm actually using a QA version, uh, a pre-release version. This is what is uh, being tested to go out next week, I think. Um, so don't look at my numbers, hide that. Um, but you can actually see your version there and then look at the version on Warehouse, and that is the most up-to-date version. Whatever's on Warehouse is always what we're, our current release is. Um, a question came in about Gables. Right now, gables are actually a piece of the roof. So if I change this to gable, this geometry right here is actually roof and not wall. Um, roofs can actually story. The second part of the question is, can roofs clear story? Um, they can. So I can have one line here and then another, basically similar to what happened here, except they could actually have a two-story and have one roof go over. The height of really doesn't matter as long as the geometry laps. In this case, so if I took this wall up another four feet, I would have to put this in as two separate roofs because this roof won't lap up four more feet onto this upper roof. So it's really all a question of geometry. It has really nothing to do with levels or height. Um, but a question asked about, are we working on the ability to automatically do this? Um, not right now. This is more something that we're leaving uh, you to be able to do. Um, it is possible in the future that we'll have the ability to join multiple roofs, um, but it's not, not real high on the list of things we're worrying about right this second. Um, oh, uh, another question is, what, what would happen if I drew this and then I pulled this roof line over to line up here, so, as, so to kind of try to create the same roof line. It actually won't let you do that. Um, I will try. If I grab this line and try to pull it over, it'll say, okay, 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 but as soon as I get here, whoa, that was worse than I was expecting. So yeah, absolutely no, no chance. Um, normally what happens when you try to move it into a spot it can't, it'll, uh, the cursor will turn into a little orange X and it will tell you you can't drag that over there. Um, well, one way or another wouldn't let me do that. Um, so yeah, you cannot do that. Um, I have some more questions about merging multiple roofs or soffits, um, fascia. Yes, we, we don't right now, again, we don't specify fascia size. What we specify is the board width of either the rafter or the truss and automatically calculates that fascia, basically a vertical cut at the end. <clears throat> um, we have another question about matching the fascia size off of different slopes. Um, you can do a little bit of trial and error there and play with your board widths. Um, so let me uh, start a new window real quick and see if I can illustrate this. You can do something uh, where you can actually kind of play with your different values to see if you can get those faces to line up, absolutely. If you're smarter than I am or uh, enjoy things like math, you can actually do geometrical calculations to figure out how different uh, roofs line up. That's not... Uh, a strength of mine, so I always prefer to have something like a computer figure that sort of thing out for me. But if I do create a roof something like this, um, I can play with things, play with different geometry like uh, oops, the overhang length to try to calculate what that's going to be and uh, to figure out where that will, will overlap and, and actually tie in there together. Um, and it's actually cutting my height short on this. You can see it right there. 
See that? So it actually cut the height short on this one to keep the same fascia height all the way around. So it's actually forcing a two foot or a four twelve fascia on the six twelve. Um, so at this point, if you know those values, you can put it in to force it, and it will uh, it will line your fascia up. Um, Uh, two other questions. One was a Dutch gable. The other is a uh, single parallel. Single parallel works very similar to the way a double parallel does, um, but it only slopes up one direction. So if I take this same roof and see if I can do all of this in the, the remaining three minutes we have, um, I can take this roof a single parallel looks like this. So the real functionality there is if I have something like a second story wall running across here um, where the roof dies into you know, a corner in the walls, a single story line can be put in to break that so I actually have runoff across there. Um, the other thing that was just asked that I would like to show real quick is, and I, I Somehow I forgot about this. Um, is a uh, Dutch hip. Um, so what I want to show real quick is a Dutch hip, and I'm going to do this by drawing two roofs. My first roof is going to be standard, and I'm going to do this at whatever my setback is going to be. So I'll say it's going to be uh, six foot. So I draw that back six foot. Then I'm going to draw a boundary line across here, and then standard here and here. That's going to give me that. Now, to create the, uh, the hip piece, I'm going to draw a standard line from here to here, and then a gable. And then standard, and then another gable line to there. And that's going to give me a little very deep slope, but, but you can kind of see where I was going. And I believe at this point I could do some of the cleanup like I did before by actually changing some of my properties. Um, I think I could actually break this gable line into three pieces and make it zero overhang, then overhang, then zero overhang to actually create less overlap there uh, between the pieces. This is one way I could do it. Um, again, I could also break it up the other direction where I could actually have, uh, you know, from here down actually be kind of like I did on that dormer. I could actually create a roof that goes in this kind of shape and then have another roof just fill in right there. I'm going to do that real quick. Just because I still have one minute left. Oh, maybe I don't. Well, I'm going to do it anyhow, even though I don't have a minute left. Um, so what I could do is draw a roof. Keep it there. Standard from here to here. To here. Boundary to here, gable to here, boundary to here, and then standard lines here. See how that works. Uh, that didn't work out quite the way I was expecting it to work out. All right, so now the first way I showed you is the correct way to do that. Um, so ignore everything I said from 11.59 on. Um, all right, the last thing I got in here is a question about eave heights. Um, it's a question about calculating heel heights throughout. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what the question is. 
Uh, if you ask that question, if you want to send us an email maybe with an example of what you're talking about, um, it looks like one of those questions is going to be easier to see an answer than it is to try to explain an answer, especially typing text. So uh, if you did have the question about calculating or specifying eave heights, uh, go ahead and send us an email, uh, maybe with a picture to explain what you're asking. Um, and that is all the questions. So again, this webinar will be posted up on our website. Keep an eye out. Um, I'll also be putting up uh, probably another uh, blog or two in the next uh, few days. Um, I'd like to keep it relative to what we were just talking about. So if there was a specific roof type or a kind of roof that you know you see that we didn't cover, please do leave that in the comments and uh, let me know because I can, I can put a blog or two out about that. But uh, that's it for now. Uh, again, I'm Aaron Dietzen. Uh, on the line with us is Kelly Ogle helping us out. And uh, thank you very much for your time and hope, hope this is helpful. Thank you.